Hi, my name is Dr. Johanna Jarko, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology at Stony Brook University. So one of the things that I've become really interested in is peer victimization. So we define peer victimization uh, by a couple of different characteristics. So one is there's usually a power differential between the bully and the victim. Uh, the second thing is that it, the content of the bullying is, is negative and that negativity is on purpose. And the third definition is that it's ongoing. So it's not something that could just accidentally happen once. And these three things together are, are basically what we, we consider uh, the qualities of peer victimization. So peer victimization is extremely common uh, throughout uh, elementary school and going into junior high school. And we're really only just now beginning to learn about the long-term implications of the experience of peer victimization. For many, many, many years, we thought that it was simply a rite of passage, that being bullied was just something that you kind of had to live through, that you would get over it, that you would move on with your life, and that it just didn't really matter. And we're, we're finding more and more that that is just really not the case. So being exposed to peer victimization in childhood is actually associated with many long-term risks. So you can have much poorer uh, mental health, so uh, more anxiety, more depression later in life. Uh, people who have been bullied don't often achieve as much as those who have not been bullied. And what's really fascinating is that there are these interesting categories of people who are called bully victims. So they're both perpetrating the bullying and also being on the receiving end of, of being bullied as well. And so in my research, I was really interested in trying to come up with a way that we can study the lasting effects of bullying on brain functions. We know that there are these different kinds of uh, psychopathology outcomes. What are the mechanisms that actually might be driving that? And so we developed an fMRI paradigm where we're able to actually model that experience of bullying while people are undergoing functional magnet magnetic resonance imaging. And so what we do is we bring kids into the laboratory and we expose them to uh, what they believe are other children um, that they get to interact with. And some of these kids that they're interacting with are, are actually bullies. And what we're finding is that among individuals who have been bullied when they were younger, that they're having a different reaction while they're anticipating this kind of bullying feedback that they're getting from peers compared to those who aren't. And so we don't really know exactly how this is going to end up affecting individuals' mental health, but we are in a very lucky position of being able to study certain groups of kids longitudinally, so across time. And we can see if the level of bullying that they've experienced at one period of time, the neural mechanisms that that kind of engages while they're experiencing bullying while undergoing fMRI, if those things together can predict who ends up having more negative outcomes a little bit later on in life. And this is a really important thing to study because we know that peer vict victimization and bullying is, is really rampant in our schools. And having a better understanding of, of the way that this kind of, um, this kind of uh, social interaction really gets in under your skin and gets into your brain may really help people understand that it's truly critical uh, to try to avoid and minimize these kinds of behaviors as early as possible.